Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In the previous video, we have seen about the model one to many relationship, the embedded document. So now in this video, we will try to see about the one to many relationship, the other way of using <coughs> to many, the other way around. First, we have seen about the embedded document, embedded documents. That how we that is nothing but person to the address. Now, let's say that in this video, we will see about the subset pattern. What is the subset pattern? Let's try to see about this. Now, let's say that, for example, a potential problem, normally the problem with the embedded document pattern, what we have seen the person to address, right? That is one type of pattern. The problem with this embedded document pattern is that it can lead to large document so for example what i can say is something like now uh, what i can say is something like it can lead to large documents for example let's say that you are having a person and you are combining the address of that person so that means let's say that he has a 10 10 addresses so that means the document size will be becoming somewhat big and if you think that these addresses are unbound, so that means those are unlimited. Okay, so those are not confined to the. If it is confined to the ten, means okay, fine. So if document is also uh, becoming big, means so it is have some restriction. But if it is an unbounded, so that means it is an unlimited thing. Then it can lead to the very large document. Normally, the document size it should be in the one DB, the limited sixteen MB for each document, not per collection. Then in this case, we can use this subset pattern to only access the data which is required by the application instead of the entire set of embedded document embedded data. Here you want when you are having this want to use this embedded document thing, and you are having a this embedded document is unlimited, then you can use this subset pattern only access the data which is required by the application instead of the entire set of so I think you got confused. Let's say that I will try to give you an example so that you will understand. <clears throat> we will take the same the product example. I will not try to give the demo example for this one. Just I will try to explain you orally so that you will understand. Let's say that I have a product and this product has an ID. You already know this product has an ID. That ID is equal. And we have of that product. Like this, you have a price, you can have the price. So, like this, you can have all point. So let's assume that this is now for a product. Okay, for a product, we will be having a reviews. So, we'll be having a reviews. So, that means here it is a one to many relationship. One product can have many reviews. So, one review can be it is it belongs to the one product only. Okay, a review cannot belong to the multiple products. A review belongs to the one product only so that means a product can have multiple reviews that means many reviews so a review belongs to the product so like this you need to teach the relationship between these two that product can have many reviews and a review belongs to the one product only that means a review can have uh, each review has only one product each review cannot have many products that means a review belongs to a product and product can have many reviews so like this you can assume <coughs> Now let's say that these reviews, if you try to see the reviews, we cannot restrict that reviews to the only 10 reviews or 100 reviews will be. A product if it is purchased means we can have hundreds of reviews. So this is an unlimited thing. Okay. So this is an unlimited thing. Now let's say that uh, here, if you want to use the reviews here, so I can have a reviews like this. That is an array. And here you can have one. Two thing like uh, what I can review text I can take I can write some and we can have an author as reviewed so like this we can have some details so I can have the same thing so like this we will be going on having the reviews so now you have these reviews now if you assume that you can have thousands thousands of reviews for each product if you try to maintain these reviews in as an embedded document in the product details 
document will become very big so for that reason what we can do is so we can have a reference that means we can have a reviews a collection and in this collection you can copy these all the documents and i can so these are all the reviews we can have it these are the have multiple so these are the reviews now for each review we can assign something like uh, what i can say for each review we can assign something like product id for this right so we will be having a product id i can assign product id of one so like this we will be having for each one product id like this i can assign so now it is fine so we, we don't have this one reviews in the product now if we have a product and we have a review collection this product id will be referencing to this is everything is fine it is everything is working fine but now the problem comes where this problem comes and now i want to show that uh, whenever i am i am trying to show a product in an application let's say that in an online application okay in an online application or mobile application when i am showing a product a product details trying to show a product details i want to show recent 10 reviews right okay for the first time i need to do recent 10 reviews afterwards i can show if, if the user wants to see more reviews so then i can show all the reviews now by default we need whenever we are trying to show the product details by default we need to the recent return so that afterwards when the user clicks on the more reviews then i can i can go to collection and get all the reviews but here whenever we want to get the rest 10 recent 10 reviews then first we need again i need to query to get the recent 10 reviews that means we are making two queries again so this causes this causes the resource uh, usage we are using the resource more so what can we do here subset pattern we can have a review section here and we can store the recent so here we i can store the recent 10 reviews okay, i can store the recent 10 so that <coughs> when the user showing the product details we can automatically without querying the reviews table we can get the recent 10 reviews and if user clicks on the reviews i can go to this reviews table uh, sorry reviews collection and i can get all the documents related to the reviews so that is fine right so this is called as a subset pattern so depending on the requirement we need to think so what are we are trying to do so we are trying to something like storing the we are storing the 10 most recent reviews in the product collection only the required sub subset of the overall data is written to the product collection if user wants to see additional reviews the application makes a call to the review collection that is the thing i am trying to do so this is one of the concept which we can do now here we are having some trade-offs say trade-offs means disadvantage using smaller documents containing more frequently accessed data reduces the overall size of the working set so this is common so using the smaller documents so frequently accessed data so we can the smaller documents results in improved read performance for the data that the application access most frequent so now however what i can say is this subset pattern what is the pattern we are trying to use it right the subset pattern we are trying to use it here results in that data duplication so here we are having list of all the reviews and also we are saving the 10 most recent reviews here so this results in the data duplication right now we are having the reviews in the two places for example for example let's say that for example let's for example let's say that in this example so in this example what we are trying to see reviews are maintained in the both the product product collection and also in the reviews collection so now whenever uh, what i say is extra steps must be taken uh, to ensure that the reviews are consistent in both the collections so now we need to perform some extra steps to update both in the products collection and also in the reviews collection in order to make these reviews consistent to each for example let's say that when a customer edits the review for example a customer edits the review now the application what it has to do it has to make two right operations that means first it needs to update it in the reviews and also it needs to check in the reviews that is the whether it is present uh, products collection that whether that review is present in this 10 most recent reviews are there if it is present means i need to update here it also so that means i need to perform two right operations so now <clears throat> 
we need to update both in the product collection and also another one we need to update in the reviews collection also so this causes some duplication thing and also you must also has to implement a logic in your application to ensure that the reviews in the product collection are always the 10 most reviews okay so the 10 most reviews only it should be always the 10 recent reviews only it should be there and you need to make ensure that these are there or not the product collection so these type of trade-offs disadvantages are there so whenever you are trying to uh, whenever a, your customer adds a neat new, new review then you need to add it here the new review into the 10 most recent reviews and you need to remove the last one so that all the uh, it should be at most 10 reviews should be there. and also whenever whenever they are trying to update the review you need to delete that review uh, sorry you need to update the review in the reviews uh, collection and also in the products collection for example when they are trying to delete a review so you need to de delete in the reviews collection and also you need to check here in the product collection i need to review i need to delete so these are the some of the disadvantages so maintained in the subset pattern but i am telling you that whenever you want to show that depends on your requirements application requirements and all those things whenever you are having scenarios like this you need to do like this so other simple use cases uh, where we can use this subset pattern is uh, comments on a blog post when you want to when you only want to show the most recent or highest rated comments by default then you can store it comments like that and also cast members in a movie when you only want to show the cast members with the largest roles by default means we can store it in the for a movie the cast details also we can for example let's say that uh, we have a movie and we know that hero the lead role hero and and all the main lead roles so now movie you will be having cast and separate collection you are having means when you query the movie and you query the cast also of that one you can get the four five recent lead roles so you can add it to the collection so that by querying on the movie you can get the lead roles. so if you want to show more cash means they can go go to the cash collection and so these are all the some of the scenarios where you may be coming into the scenarios that to maintain a subset pattern maintaining the uh, most recent reviews or recent thing highest rated comments something like that the same product collection so that without using any query we can get the all thing so this is all about the subset pattern in the one to many relationship the next video we will try to see one to many relationship with a document reference so how it will be with a document reference let's try hope you understood about this one if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel Thank you.